that's just a quick guide how to use Video Studio Studio. Um, we will use some sample videos and I upload them. Um, I guess I'll put the link in the description. So if you want to follow along, you can yeah, just go ahead and do that. So let's get started. First off, we have to import media. To do that, we can either um, open up a folder in the file explorer and we just drag all the videos we want here or we click on our file open media and go to the folder so let's say those three videos Hit open and you'll see they are imported into the source panel there is no output yet or at least no um, 360 degree video we first have to do calibration. We don't have to synchronize the videos as this was taken with a synchronized rig. Um, you only have to do that if you have a DIY camera. So if you're using a GoPro Fusion or a Insta360 or Pro or One X or whatever, you don't have to do that. You can skip this. That's what. <clears throat> that's why we are skipping this in this tutorial. Uh, there will be a tutorial on synchronization, but another time. So, click on calibration, and we can either um, set all these values and let Video Studio try to calibrate, or we can import a template. I have created a template just to show you. However, the template is just a quick and dirty, um, yeah. Um, template I made in PT GUI. Um, you'll see you, you see there's some ghosting here, and it's really not good. The rest is fine, but um, that's bothering me. So let's reset this and see if Video Studio can figure out how the images have to be aligned. So. If you are using a camera with a preset, um, you can click here, and it will it will uh, just pop up here. There is no preset for this camera, so we are we can't use this. But I know I have taken it with a circular feature eye, and the field of view was approximately um, I'm not sure to ten. We then adjust the input scrub which shows Video Studio where the actual data is. So our panorama, the black parts are not part of the panorama, that's why we are like this and like like this maybe. A bit bigger. So head over to to the next input, do the same. That looks okay. And to the to the third input uh, So just like that. And we then click apply and you see it has changed a bit but <laughs> it's still not something we can use and then there's the frame selection um, I will do a tutorial on that because for this pro uh, project we don't have to change anything so we just click calibrate make sure you entered all the um, all the right values say calibrate it will ask you if you're sure um, if you want to synchronize your videos first. As I said, this is a synchronized rig and we don't have to do this, so just click yes. It will start to process. Uh, this might take a while cons um, depending on your uh, on your rig. So if there are more lenses, uh, more cameras, or if it's uh, a really huge file, this might take a while. Uh, for our sample, it will only take Oh, I don't know, we're already at 70%. Should only take a few moments. Oh, 
OK. There's a stitched output. I can see there's some ghosting, but um, I guess I'll take it. You can always reset. That's probably because I entered the wrong field of view. You can always reset and do again and look at a video stitch calibrate again. But for now, I'll just uh, go with that one. You see the orientation is a bit off. <laughs> yeah, we're looking, yeah. That's the sky, and that's the <laughs> bottom of the image, so that's not really what we want. So I am going to change the orientation. You can also color correct inside of Video Stitch Studio, but that's a whole other topic. I will cover this in another tutorial. I just want to quickly to show you how to get some quick results and how to play around with the uh, with the software. So just orientation. We don't want to stabilize because I think it looks pretty stable. There is not a lot of movement. You can see some cars down here. But that's pretty much it. So the camera isn't shaking. We don't have to stabilize. Um, we click on orientation, adjust, on frame you'll see this grid popping up and then you simply click and drag woo, um, until you are happy with the results so take your time um, and just check if every line that's straight in real life is straight here so I'm just gonna do that real quick and I'll be right back with you so once you have done this, um, you just click on Adjust on Frame. The grid will disappear. And yeah, that's your output. You um, can click on Interactive. That will show you how this looks, uh, how this wheel looks. If you're looking around in your VR headset or uh, if you watching a 360 video on your smartphone or whatever. This is how it will look. You see the resolution is pretty small because I set this to 2000 by 1000. Um, that's what we are doing now because we have now done everything I want to do to the panorama in this tutorial. So we only need to export. So first of all, that's the size. Um, if you if you want to edit it further in our video studio, I recommend using a smaller size. As you can see here, I use this size. Um, that's my GPU memory usage um, and so on. You only want to have it big enough to see what happens, but it's getting it's becoming slow if you are using high values. So for our panorama, we, I want to output. I know it's an 8K rig, so I can. Simply do this, or you could also um, rebutting because I don't want it to uh, <laughs> go slow on me. So I could also say set optimal size. This will look at all the images uh, and all the at the at the stitched result, and it will automatically set the value, the true value. So. That's where you put your file name. You can also browse and select a location. Um, and then there's the, the encoder settings. So you can choose if you want to export as a uh, MP4, as a JPEG sequence, PNG, or if you want to do like I do, I want to export as a ProRes move file because I want to edit this further. I want to edit this in uh, Premiere Pro. I don't have any audio in this uh, project. You can uh, export audio. Just tick the box. Select one of the uh, videos where you want to take the audio from. The codec, the bitrate, and just export. But for this time I just want to set this to 8K and you then click 
process now, which will ask you to save your file. Um, yeah, let's save the file. Does already exist? Do I want to override it? Yes, I want. Yeah, well, and that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have a question, please just ask in the comments or uh, drop us a message, and we'll see what we can do.